We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning, everyone from Germany. Um, and a very warm welcome to this session. A session entitled A Human Rights Based Approach to Regulating Platforms, in which we hope to discuss this topic with you and um, at least one expert. I'm uh, not, not sure um, if we have um, received an information that um, there's one um, uh, of our experts um, who can't make it today. Um, uh, she's uh, not not feeling well, and um, there's another one that I hope is on the way, um, and uh, I will have the honor to introduce uh, them to you in just a couple of minutes. My name is Sebastian Schwieder, um, and I'm representing Amnesty International Germany as the uh, spokesperson of our coordination group on uh, human rights in the digital age, jointly with my uh, colleagues Christian Burkhardt and Jakob Scherer who will be monitoring the remote channels and uh, pick up interesting thoughts and uh, questions coming from you. So um, the um, principal question of today's session is, how can human rights best be taken into account when elaborating a regulatory framework for online platforms? Um, or perhaps a bit more specific, um, what are the main um, human rights issues of um, the big internet and the intermediaries, business activities, and what regulatory tools are available to uh, resolve them. Um, before we delve into this subject matter, let me just um, briefly give you an overview of our housekeeping uh, rules and especially your options uh, to participate. As you know, this is a town hall event. Um, so by definition, it should be very interactive and uh, everyone participating is very much invited and encouraged to uh, contribute. You can do so in various ways, and I, I assume you're familiar in principle with um, most of them because um, using Zoom will help uh, you know the, the features that um, are available for you. You can use the hand, uh, the raise hand feature on the bottom of the Zoom window to take the floor for the question live by, by audio, and um, if you like, uh, you can switch on your camera as well. Um, in the uh, chat window, um, at the right hand side, um, you can post questions to the panelists. And um, then there is tweet back. Um, we encourage you to make intensive use of this uh, additional tool to start side discussions on uh, related topics. Um, and uh, the tweet back channel will also be monitored by us and um, brought into the, the ongoing session uh, in a summarized way. So um, that's an additional tool, and the best thing is that unlike Zoom, um, uh, tweetback doesn't disappear when the session is over. So um, uh, it will remain uh, for, for a couple of hours. Um, so you, you'll be able to, to wrap up your discussions properly and um, uh, um, look, look them up again, if you like. Um, the link to tweetback, I think, will be shared in the chat window um, just uh, shortly um, by our online moderators. And also feel free to share anything interesting um, on Twitter if you like. And if you do so, please please use the Twitter hashtags um, that, again, um, I will, uh, will be shared in the, in the chat uh, soon. With that, uh, let's start into the uh, substantial part of our session. Um, and uh, mm, as, a, as a background, um, and to, to give you an idea of what Amnesty um, has been doing so far on the on the issue of platform regulation. I'll just um, point you to two documents that were published in this context um, uh, in the in the in the past two years. Um, one of them is um, uh, was was um, published in 2019 when Amnesty um, uh, came forward with a report on on the most pressing human rights issues um, regarding the surveillance-based business models of the largest online platforms to date, Google and Facebook. Um, this uh, report um, 
um, entitled Surveillance Giants is a um, piece of research that urges both states and companies to act. Um, on the one hand, it's um, states um, by giving users a choice to opt out from ubiquitous surveillance when using digital services by adopting strong data protection laws and including effective enforcement and redress mechanisms by uh, establishing uh, rules to ensure uh, algorithmic accountability um, and by ensuring interoperability of services also to allow users to switch to privacy-friendly alternatives and um, break the uh, uh, quasi monopolies um, that uh, are prevalent in the market. And companies, on the other hand, are um, uh, recalled of their responsibilities um, to respect human rights and to carry out human rights due diligence. When the European Commission tabled the draft legislative acts on, of its uh, new digital services package, the Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act, uh, Amnesty took the opportunity to um, uh, narrow down the recommendations from the uh, 2019 report to highlight the need for improvement of the of the proposed legislation, um, such as by restricting targeted online advertising based on privacy invasive profiling. But internet platform regulation has been a focus of legislators, not just in the EU, but also in other regions of the world. And uh, will be interesting to hear from the panel what might be learned from that experience. So uh, let's turn now to our panelists in this session. And um, I will briefly introduce them to you. I, I've heard that um, Greg is all, uh, already um, here as well. So um, first of all, we, we have the honor um, of welcoming Professor Kazuhiko uh, Fuchikawa from um, Osaka City University. Uh, his research focuses on competition law, and uh, just recently he published a paper on digital platform regulation in Japan. So that, that will be an interesting um, point that um, we might be hearing uh, from. Um, and uh, then we have uh, Greg Mrochkowski. Um, he's here to bring in the, um, the perspective of the Interactive Advertising Bureau. Um, uh, of which he is the director of public policy for Europe. So um, welcome to the both of you. And um, I'm again for any latecomers, um, uh, Nika, that uh, that uh, we also want, wanted to welcome to the panel um, won't be able to make it today. So um, there's one empty chair, but um, we I think we will be able to to have a fruitful discussion anyway. So without any further ado, I'll hand over the floor to you now, um, to the panelists, and um, ask you for your initial statements on uh, which human rights issues you consider the most pressing in the context of online platforms. Um, Kazuhiko uh, Fuchikawa, may, may I ask you to start the round? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Kazuhiko Fuchikawa, and it's my honor to be able to speak to you today. Uh, as a competition law professor uh, based in Japan, I can offer the agent perspective. The most impressing, uh, most pressing issue concerning human rights is how to regulate profiling and the, the gathering the, of personal data in targeted advertisement. We see lots of uh, advertisements on the various internet platform services when we use search engines or social network services, et cetera. Uh, there are two main types of advertisement, namely search advertising and programmatic display advertisement. First, search advertising is sold to entrepreneurs uh, depending on a particular time and period. Second, uh, programmatic display advertisement is sold to entrepreneurs targeting gender, generation, interests, etc. Therefore, profiling personal data will be problematic, mainly for uh, programmatic display advertisement. Big tech companies such as Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, namely 
GAFA uh, makes the first majority of their revenue through digital advertisements at the expense of our privacy, especially in the attention gathering, grabbing markets. Digital platform companies such as Facebook and Google sometimes offer free services to users while they collect their personal data. On the other hand, they offer advertising services to company targeting customers or viewers by gender, uh, generation, uh, preference, preferences, etc. The structure of the digital platform markets consists of two groups, users and companies. The platform services con connect these two or multiple parties and related parties to each other. These are called two-sided or multi-sided markets. These uh, targeted digital advertisements invade our privacy and human rights. From the economic perspective, the sales of goods and commodities are enhanced by using targeted advertisements. This will promote competition in the digital platform markets and will affect the consumer welfare since we will have more goods and commodities through the worldwide marketplace. In a sense, the targeting as will enhance consumer welfare when the sales of goods increase through the targeted advertisements. United Nations uh, Declaration of Human Rights uh, provides uh, no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondent, nor to attacks upon his honor and reputation. Everyone has the right to protection of the law against such interference or attacks. In addition, uh, Article 24 of the Data Service Act provides advertising transparency obligation on online platforms. The platforms need to be transparent to enable regulators and viewers to identify the sender of advertisement. Furthermore, the platforms are required to disclose the main parameters used to determine the recipient to whom the advertisement is displayed. Amnesty International calls for stricter limits on targeting of online advertising, increased transparency requirements and disclosing the main parameter is not enough to protect our privacy and human rights. Our fundamental human rights, including privacy, needed to be protected. On the other hand, the freedom of uh, freedom and economics of choice is also important. We need to think how to balance between protection of human rights and the freedom and economics of choice. That's all I have to say. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kasuiko. And, um... We pass the floor directly on to, to Greg. Welcome, welcome, Greg, in the round. Thank you. Um, welcome. And I, I guess it's um, mostly good morning to, to everyone. Um, very nice to be here. Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, my name is indeed uh, Greg Brochkowski. I'm Public Policy Director at um, IAB Europe. Um, we consider ourselves um, European um, Trade Association for Digital Advertising and Marketing um, Ecosystem. Um, so in the abstract, um, we would represent really anyone um, with investment in, um, in online advertising. Um, and the, in the online advertising world, um, as many of you might know, is, 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 quite, is quite complex. So there will be a variety of different players we try to bring together um, all of them. So I'm thinking advertisers, agencies, um, technology companies, as well as um, publishers um, who have um, digital properties that will be um, ad-supported. 
Um, we work with um, companies um, in our direct membership, um, over 90 of them, um, but also with, um, with a host of um, trade bodies around, around, um, around Europe, in the EU and, and beyond. Um, so there are, um, there are 25 um, these national, national bodies that um, are also part of our membership and, and all of our network would, um, would, would represent probably over um, 5,000 um, businesses, um, as I said, um, quite, quite a range of them. Um, we, we have been very closely following the, the discussions um, in, the, in the EU on the, on the new um, Digital Services um, Act, um, in particular on the, on, on the DSA rather than the, um, rather than the DMA, but obviously they, they kind of, they do go um, hand in hand. Um, I think from, from, our, from our perspective where, um, where we've been um, looking at it, um, again, I can, I can offer probably, I can offer this very, um, very niche perspective on, of, um, of online advertising um, within, the, within the DSA. So that's, um, that's this EU um, and still very, very specific, um, very specific angle. Um, but I guess you know one can extrapolate and make um, make further um, may make further observations um, broadly broadly speaking. Um, I think what we've been what we've been seeing um, just very very top line, and then we can maybe explore um, um, explore some of these issues um, further. We have been seeing um, interesting um, interesting conversations around um, around um, how this. Um, how this new proposed um, regulation, um, Digital Services um, Act, um, would um, would articulate with other existing um, with other existing um, legal frameworks. Um, from our perspective, we've been um, very very interested um, in how it will um, intersect with the um, EU privacy and data protection um, framework. Um, so that's probably one very high level observation. The other high level observation would be. Um, the the very scope of um, what is it that we are talking about. So we conventionally used to talk about this digital um, platform, um, digital platform term. We use that terminology, um, but there is like there's probably much more to much more to it. From our perspective, where we um, a lot of our members would be, for instance, um, would be um, pub would, would be the so called publishers. Um, they um, well, a lot can be categorized under this um, under this term of the of the digital digital platform in the EU. A lot, well, I guess many of you will know very well um, the data the Digital Services Act um, bill um, is also um, nicknamed very often as um, content moderation bill. Um, I think that that also that is also something something relevant something relevant to to consider. Um, and I'm saying all of this um, again, kind of going back a tiny bit to my to my first point, um, which was about the fact that um, that it's relevant to um, to 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 consider um, to consider the existing um, the existing laws. Um, and what is it that the, um, the the proposals or new new frameworks are really scoped to um, are really scoped to achieve, and um, who is it that they um, that they properly um, they properly cover? Um, in maybe maybe also um, maybe also to to speak to the um, to speak to the human rights um, aspect. Um, I think well, of course, we are not. Um, well, um, we we might not be um, we not might not be experts um, on on this, but um, I would say um, I would say that it is important um, for any lawmaking, any policy making, in fact, um, to take into account a variety of um, a, a variety of these. Um, it should be it should be balanced. So I'm looking, for instance, at the um, EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, and I'm thinking. Um, well, um, respect for private and, and family life, um, protection of personal data, also freedom of expression and, um, and information, um, where, um, where I think that, um, that has enshrined the media freedom and pluralism, which is, um, which is very, very important, and also freedom to conduct the business and right to, um, right to property. So I think that's articles um, 16 and 17 on, of, that, of that charter, 
um, this is a non-exhaustive list. Um, all I'm trying to all I'm trying to do is um, probably um, one would want to one would want to take a balanced view of what um, what actually um, um, or what kind of um, rights um, should be um, should be respected um, rather than um, look at one one exclusively. Um, I, I would probably stop here, and I'm like definitely I'm definitely happy um, happy to explore um, provide for more of views of what we are seeing in the in the discussions um, and also specifically on advertising. Um, but I'm just thinking maybe maybe it's the best maybe it's best to stop here and then we can then we can continue. Thank you so much, Greg. And um, yeah, I, I believe quite um, a, a few challenges to, to human rights have already been uh, named. And, and uh, before, I think we can we can try to explore maybe some some more. Um, let's uh, uh, let's uh, stay with uh, for a moment uh, with uh, what I I think um, is the the number one issue that uh, that. Um, we can discuss here because it uh, revolves around the very um, business model that that drives the digital platform industry, and that um, uh, um, I think uh, uh, we we have some uh, experts uh, who can who can speak on that um, uh, specifically. It's uh, the targeted advertising um, model that's that's based on detailed user profiles um, containing personal data uh, about the user's interests, about their um, preference. Uh, preferences, their their behavior, um, and uh, uh, you. Uh, I I think you you know Amnesty's position on that. Um, uh, uh, we believe that. Uh, um, I'm I'm trying here. You, you will notice I'm I'm trying to bring in um, uh, the the civil society's uh, perspective now here. Um, uh, uh, we we believe that uh, um, it has. Uh, a huge effect on 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 the right uh, to privacy. It is is um, a very in, invasive technology, and um, uh, when you balance it uh, with other uh, uh, fundamental and human rights that um, uh, I think both both of you have already mentioned, um, uh, this this balance shouldn't uh, be at the end uh, a balance that that goes. Uh, um, on that that hangs on the one end and um, doesn't uh, consider that, um, that there has been um, a balance on, on this maybe before when we look at traditional um, uh, traditional uh, newspaper making and etc. Um, that there have been other advertising models um, uh, that that weren't um, uh, based on on uh, targeted advertising uh, or not so much on, on Personalized um, behavioral advertising, um, maybe more on a uh, more more uh, fuzzy uh, target group uh, of readers of of that particular um, newspaper. So um, maybe we can come back to this and and um, try to figure out a little more how what what can be done um, to to develop this this further in a, in, in a um, way that. Uh, that would um, actually um, that would actually uh, respect the the human rights um, uh, to to um, the protection of privacy, and, um, uh, and 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 see what what can be done uh, by by the business to to um, enhance protection on on that without um, uh, obviously um, um, disabling the uh, whole sector. Of, that that was relying on this uh, on this technology. Um, may I may I ask you back again to to maybe step in here? Yes, sure. Um, thank you. And um, and I and I have to say um, we we very much um, sincerely appreciate the you know some opportunity for dialogue. I think very often, again, looking at the at the European perspective, mostly um, we um, we talk um, we sort of. Group ourselves, put ourselves in um, in these um, in, in in silos, and um, and there's um, there's not enough um, not enough dialogue. Um, so um, so that's um, an opportunity for a frank discussion is um, is appreciated. I think um, I would um, I would first probably. Um, 
challenge the very um, notion of of servants um i think which 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 came um which came up um once or once or twice i think i think it would unfortunately mischaracterize the um online advertising or data driven advertising business model um i i would think that um i would think that if we actually properly look at the surveillance um surveillance definition it would point to um monitoring that is done by um enforcement police army um so that's a very different um that's a that's a very different different notion um advertisers they don't really they don't really care about quote unquote surveilling their their users this is not the objective they um advertising industry does um is invested in creating value for their customers whether this is b2b customers if they are in the broader supply chain um or eventually for their um for their potential um clients um from the broader advertising industry um customers i meant um from the broader advertising industry perspective it is also um relevant for the for the web as such um, to remain um, to remain open and in, in their advertising revenues, um, they are they are critical. Um, I think if we look at the if we look at the traditional media and um, an existing an existing business um, an existing approaches, um, you would um, one one would one would quickly discover that um, well in fact um, this strive for addressability. Um, has always been um, has always been there. Um, this is why um, th this is this is why some in the past some advertisers would more like more likely go to like one magazine or the other. This is why um, certain advertisers would go for um, for advertising around specific um, um, specific slots on the um, on on TV or or on the radio around specific programs because they were they were looking to. Um, they were looking to address their commercial messaging to to a specific audience. Um, with internet, um, obviously, um, there are more opportunities. Um, there are more opportunities out there, um, and indeed, um, the industry is trying to leverage them um, to make that addressability um, in the right um, in the right manner. But that doesn't mean that the law um that the law does not that the, does not apply and that this is um what some people would call the wild wild west um in fact um i think i think we would um from the european perspective we would point to point to the existing um privacy and data protection framework um and so that would um primarily um consist of the gdpr and e privacy um instrument currently directive the so-called um cookies directive Cookies law, which um, where GDPR in particular unambiguously established the principles of data protection in the digital advertising context. Um, I think I heard here um, profiling being named. Well, um, um, I, I think the I think that law uh, comprehensively um, uh, comprehensively indeed um, covers a host of um, a host um, a host of user um, user rights and and a very different terminology. Um, that would that would actually point to point to advertising. So um, just to name two things. So pseudonymous identifiers under Recital 26, online identifiers such as cookies, device identifiers are examples explicitly of personal data under G GDPR. So that's like Article um, 4.1, Recital 30. In addition, GDPR contains rules on profiling and provides enhanced um, rights to, to users when the profiling takes place. So that's, for instance, Article um, 4.4. 4. 4. 4. Um, behavioral, that includes where um, users' um, behavior is tracked on online under Recital 24. Um, explicitly, online advertising is, is mentioned also um, in, the, in the regulation under, um, under Recital 50, um, 58. What we are seeing is that um, is that data protection authorities um, in the EU um, have been issuing a host of guidance, updated guidance, um, on, for instance, on cookies and and other um, tracking um, technology. Um, so so this is um, this is an object um, of existing law enforcement, and which is um, which is what we are very much um, supportive of, and we have seen. Um, we have seen the, the Digital Services Act 
um, as an opportunity um, as an opportunity provide to provide for additional set of um, safe safeguards, um, if you if you like, or additional um, additional layer um, of transparency vis a vis the vis a vis the user. Um, I think um, my um, my fellow panelists mentioned Article Twenty Four, or maybe that was you, Sebastian. Um, so th there there are transparency transparency provisions there. Um, and we would um, we would be definitely supportive of um, supportive of them. Um, maybe I stop here and um, um, yes, and and um, and maybe also give the floor to to my fellow panelists as well. Thank you, Greg. Um, yeah, I will um, uh, just just hand over to you, as we could. If, um, do, do you have any comments on that? And maybe maybe. Um, uh, you you can bring in the, the perspective um, uh, of the the um, platform regulation in in Japan. Um, if, if there is anything um, similar that you would like to point to, um, welcome. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, I uh, in Japan uh, from the aspect of uh, Japan's aspect. Uh, we have also have uh, uh, laws like the uh, DSA or DMA as well, and uh, this calls uh, transparent uh, uh, promoting transparent act or something like that. And uh, yeah, and uh, we are struggling with uh, uh, regulating the SNS. Uh, but uh, I, in my understanding, uh, the DSA regulate the uh, uh, SNS. So I think, yeah, uh, the uh, DSA well established uh, in, in the meaning and the enforcement is more uh, stricter than uh, Japan. So contents is uh, quite similar, but the enforcement is more strict uh, in, in a sense. So yeah, but uh, uh, I think uh, in Japan, the enforcement is more flexible. Uh, so uh, so uh, Japanese government, uh, some ministry, uh, Make uh, some uh, go uh, governmental orders against uh, uh, big tech companies. Uh, so I think that's a difference. Uh, but uh, we we share the same uh, kind of uh, act uh, about that. Okay, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. And um, uh, maybe a. Uh, um, uh, second question, if you, if you can um, briefly a answer to that, um, what, um, from uh, what, what do you what do you see in the Digital Services Act and um, and, and the rules in, in Japan uh, that uh, seem to be similar in that way? W would you think that that's the right balance um, that has been achieved in, in uh, these proposals uh, or in these these um, laws already, um, or or do we have to? Uh, Kind of uh, re-engineer uh, that balance in a way that that would protect human rights uh, in a different way or in a more intensive way. Yeah, thanks so much. So yeah, uh, yeah, we we could uh, we need to restrict the negative human rights uh, impact. Uh, so sub surveillance uh, based advertising. So. Yeah, we need to require the uh, viewer to opt in uh, for future advertising. So I think the Amnesty International also uh, call for the, uh, the opt-in based uh, advertisement, not uh, instead of having to opt out. So I, I <clears throat> completely agree with that. And uh, yeah, in, in Japan, uh, we can uh, those kind of opt in and opt out is not uh, uh, express, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I I I'd like to know about the EU. So there is a uh, right for the opt in or the the 
some uh, the internet to platform market uh, companies have uh, obligation to uh, offer the right to opt-in so uh, yeah and uh, yeah and the uh, DTS service act uh, make uh, obligation against uh, uh, very uh, VLOP uh, the very, very large online platforms. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we, we also have the sim similar kind of uh, uh, regulation. And so we, we, uh, we registered uh, as a uh, kind of similar, similar to be VLOP. Uh, uh, Google or Apple, uh, and as the app store, uh, uh, app store of the uh, Apple like this. So maybe uh, the uh, we have the similar uh, regulation about this. And in, in Japan, the transparency promoting transparency law uh, is a, a report based uh, regulation. So. Uh, the big tech companies, uh, if uh, those companies are registered as a, uh, a kind of VLOP, yeah, uh, it, they need to uh, make a report annually against the uh, government. So yeah, maybe uh, we have same uh, regulations, but uh, sim there are some uh, differences, I think. Okay, I will stop the uh, comments. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, I think we, um, uh, that, uh, a few quite interesting points have, have already been uh, um, mentioned. And um, uh, I, maybe it's now the time because um, we, um, we, we have to uh, have an eye on, on, um, on the time uh, and uh, to, to bring in uh, some uh, uh, to bring in the audience and, and, and their comments, their um, questions. Um, and I've, I've uh, seen a question already here, but um, in, the, in the chat window. But maybe uh, I'll hand over to, uh, to Christian to uh, see if uh, what's happening um, elsewhere on, on tweetback, etc. Can you maybe give us a um, brief summary and, and uh, pose the first question uh, to the panelists? Thank you. Yeah, there aren't so many contributions so far. Uh, I'd really like to emphasize everyone to probably uh, share their views, uh, questions, and perspectives. But we got one very interesting question uh, in the chat, I'd say. Um, probably the question you also want to elaborate a little bit on that. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's concerning uh, yeah, what governments can do more uh, in the area of regulations. Uh, and the question also points to the near future. Um, if we are going to see probably more um, yeah, privacy regulation, um, sandboxes, yeah, right, uh, where users and persons and government work together to build more friendly regulations with balance between the rights of privacy and, and, and enablement uh, of digital economy, which I find very interesting probably also pointing uh, to the question of procedure, how to achieve that um, yeah, balanced regulations. So I would probably forward that also to our panelists. Uh, if you, Mr. Almuta, want to a little bit elaborate a little bit more on that, please feel free to do so. Um, but I would really, yeah, it would be interesting to hear um, what you think could be made better like to achieve probably a uh, balanced regulation and um, compare for example the dsa uh, in europe but also the regulation approaches elsewhere thank you thank you thank you christian um uh, regulatory sandboxes i i think that's um that's uh um uh very, very interesting um that it's it's brought up and um by you know, um, there uh, have been a lot of um, um, uh, discussions about that um, 
who wants to step in um, and and um, maybe uh, give their give their view on on how um, regulatory sandboxes should uh, should be used or, or can be of use here in, in this um, specific area. I'm not sure if my sound is clear uh, to the audience. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, if you allow me to elaborate more about the question. I mean, at government, what we realize that uh, we have the power of making regulations, but sometimes we don't understand the situation very well. So we, we start implementing a lot of sandbox and FinTech and uh, even during the pandemic and the delivery apps, we put the fin, uh, sandbox on that. And even in the privacy, because when we talk to global companies, when we talk about it, we, we, we can see there is a need of collaboration. There is a need of making the ground uh, of, of collaborating on, on, on that level. And when, with the recent publication of uh, uh, DC Department in the United Nations or the regulatory sandbox, we find this is a very um, helpful for the regulators as well as the first business. So it helps us to understand more the, the concept, the concern, if it is real, if it is, has an impact, and it would help um, the companies to understand the regulation and we build it together in a way that we, we are not killing the innovation. So uh, we can go extreme to kill the innovation in terms of full set of regulation, but we would like to, we see that collaboration uh, concept is important in these things. So this is the concept of sandbox. And I'm wondering um, in a privacy concept, especially with the advertisement, uh, which based on, on behavior behavior of customers, if that might be something that's coming in the near future. And, and this is why I put the question to, to, the, to the panelist. So if there is anything that government can do more on this area. Thank you. Is there, is there anyone who, who wants to take this question? I, I would be happy to share, um, to share, to share my, my perspective. Um, we have seen, um, so obviously, you know, be, before, before any, any legal proposal um, is, um, um, is put forward in the, um, in the EU, there is, there is a process. Um, where um, an impact assessment is made, there is an opportunity for um, for consultation, so on and so forth. I guess it's um, I guess it's very similar to other um, to other jurisdictions. So that's a, that's for us um, as a <clears throat> as the industry. That's a critical that's a critical moment to engage with the with the policymaker. That said, um, I, I think there are obviously um, limitations to what this impact assessment can achieve. Um, even though you know it it, cons it consists of a of a whole gamut of different um, of different activities, including the, the set consultation, but then also um, then also independently um, provided um, for research, um, so on and so forth. Um, I think um, when when you um, if I understand the question the question right, well, you seem to be talking about um, a bit more. Um, looking for looking for actual um, testing, some of the stress testing, some of the some of the ideas how they could the, how they could work, um, and um, I think just very generally, I think I think it sounds um, it sounds very um, it sounds very appealing. Um, what we are also then seeing, trying to work with the data protection authorities. Um, when um, who are who are to um, enforce now the um, the privacy and data protection laws um, in the in the EU, um, we are seeing that um, obviously then um, it's it's not such an easy task for um, for an enforcer to to understand specific um, specific business models. Um, again, there will be some limitations to what they can achieve, and um, as important as um, as advertising. Um, may be um, the data protection authorities have a whole host of other um, business models to, to understand and explore the potential um, privacy risks and, and, and so on. So it's not like a data protection authority would have, um, you know, um, would, can devote their, their time 100% to 100% to us. Um, so um, I think just in the abstract, um, kind of trying to Trying to reverse this whole um, this whole thinking um, and trying to, as I said, stress test some um, some ideas um, in the in the abstract. It sounds um, it sounds very interesting, and that could that could help to avoid um, 
um, avoid untested um, untested um, solutions to be to be put in writing without understanding the without understanding the business impact. Um, it's sometimes a great struggle for um, from our perspective to um, to try to understand that this potential business impact um, just because um, um, just because of the interpretation. So I, I think it's the same for the other side or you know a policymaker. Um, it works. It works um, both um, both ways. Um, so while I'm not providing a concrete ideas, I think just the very um, the the very suggestion um, is the is very um, is very appealing. As as such, I would um, in the abstract, anyways, um, I would I would support that. Thank you, Greg. Um, so uh, regulatory sandbox is. Um, uh, as a welcome uh, concept that might be tested um, to avoid um, an unintended impact um, and 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 to test uh, to test things before they they are really put on the market. Um, do you want to add anything to that, uh, Casuito, or um, shall we uh, go think, on to the next uh, question? Ah, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting to. Uh know about the uh, regular regulating sandbox yeah so i think uh, uh some uh, regulator uh, like uh, eu and japan and uh, i think uk also uh, uh make some reports about the uh, algorithm so and uh, I think the it, it, it's uh, those experience. These experience will be uh, helpful for the uh, regulator. Uh, that's a kind of uh, mm -hmm. how can I say uh, stress testing uh, for other uh, countries and the regulators. So, yeah, uh, that's my uh, comments uh, about that. And uh, yeah, and uh, in addition, we. We international uh, community need to be uh, need to share more uh, uh, information about the regu regulating the uh, big tech uh, company. So, uh, like uh, bilateral uh, agreement uh, or multilateral agreement or uh, international. Institution is preferable, but it it time uh, it takes uh, time. So I think a bilateral uh, agreement uh, or multilateral agreement is uh, realistic, in my opinion. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Kasuiko. Um, uh, um, uh, so the way could be um, uh, to uh, to lift it to an, an international level and um, maybe. Um, get uh, get to, um, to to draft uh, uh, bilateral and multilateral agreements. That's uh, that's a very interesting point as well. Um, I if I if I go through the through the chat comments, I I see that there is a discussion um, uh, going on on um, uh, if it's uh, if it's realistic that uh, that targeted advertising. Um, and just be abandoned um, because that might mean that uh, uh, services that uh, uh, users don't have to pay for right now uh, would be uh, uh, payable. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, um, is there a, is there a best practice? Um, that's that's a question from uh, um, from the audience um, on getting uh, consent uh, and consumer awareness to their data being collected um, is the European, the European model working? Um, we, we know that, um, and I, I think Greg already laid it out a bit, um, um, it's, it's um, uh, more and more going to, to a consent model. Um, is, that, is that something that uh, could, um, be, uh, could lead to, to, um, to uh, a peaceful settlement of this um, issue? Um, that users are, uh, are informed and uh, give their consent uh, freely um, or have the choice um, to um, 
use a paid service instead if they if they feel like um, they they don't uh, want to get their data then um, um, that could be an alternative is that uh, something that um, maybe I, I ask you Greg um, um, before um, is that something that uh, would be welcomed by by the advertising industry as well um, would you say that's that's not a, a workable um, option Thank you. I think um, I think we are actually quite um, invested in the um, in the consent um, paradigm. Um, I think there's there's some um, there's quite some discussion, or maybe some in some circles, also misunderstanding of what is it that we understand as opt in or or opt out. From um, from where we sit, um, we see that for accessing the device, so that's like under the, the cookies directive, e-privacy, the only um, the only applicable legal basis is the is the consent. This is in the current law. Um, for wh whereas in the in the under the GDPR, we have um, six different legal um, bases um, available. Practically, what is happening in the market is that um, in an advertising business model that's probably um, used mostly um, under the GDPR. Um, consent um, or legitimate um, interest um, legal legal basis, um, but because of that, um, also because of that um, e privacy requirement where um, consent is the is sole um, legal basis available, um, it's a very much um, consent um, um, consent um, driven um, driven approach. Um, all to all together. Um, I think it's also important to to understand that um, even even for other legal bases under the GDPR, the bar the bar is um, quite high, or definitely higher than the previous um, with the previous data protection um, directive, because one needs to provide for much more transparency about what is it that the data controller would do with the um, with the with the data. Um, for the user, and that's prior to the um, prior to any data processing, um, personal data processing taking um, taking place. Um, there is, I think, there is also this um, this this tension, or again, some discussion about what actually constitutes um, consent, including um, freely given consent, um, at least under the under the European. Um, European law, and this is something that the um, the data protection authorities are grappling with, um, and we have seen um, we have seen a host of um, uh, data protection guidance um, in different um, in different member states. Um, but um, and and we have seen we have also seen some some recommendations. I, I think there's already been some case law that is somehow um, becoming making these things um, a bit more obvious. Um, but I think there's still um, a way to go until um, we have it, um, you know, crystal clear. What is it that we What is it that we mean? Um, from um, From just just to give you some perspective, um, eight, looking at the at the traditional um, news media publishers um, in the EU, um, eighty one percent of their digital revenues comes from um, advertising. A lot of this will be. Um, because of the because of the attractiveness um, of the of targeted advertising, a lot of this um, revenues will be from um, targeted advertising. And then looking at it from a different perspective, from a user's perspective, um, indeed, um, um, users um, users don't um, don't necessarily um, run um, you know straight for um, straight for for payments. Um, I think 69%, we, um, we, we've been asking people for this, so 69% of in, in European users say they would never pay for news content online, even if no free content um, were, were available. Um, we asked recently, um, what is it that you prefer? Do you prefer the existing business model um, of, of the internet with full understanding that it really is much in in majority supported by um, targeted advertising, or you want you want to switch to paid only, um, paid only um, internet. Well, seventy five percent said, well, we prefer the we prefer the former. Um, and there is of course this um, there is of course this looming question um, that um, that restricting access um, in in terms of um, and providing only paid alternatives. Um, well, that would that would have major consequences of um, on the on the society on the society at large. Um, but and this is the last thing I would say. Um, we are seeing that um, 
publishers, um, including traditional news media publishers, they are obviously trying to test different, different business models, including subscriptions. Um, and advertising is not going to is not going to be the sole business model um, of their of their digital properties. Um, they need to they need to test different um, different things to arrive at something which is a bit more um, a bit a bit well, which is appropriate to them. Um, yeah, I would stop here. I right. probably talk too much, anyways. Thank you so much. It's been very very interesting to hear that um, the the advertising. Um, Industry is also um, open to explore new models. Um, uh, you, you said it's seventy-five percent who would prefer to stay with the current model. Um, that uh, um, is the majority, um, according to these surveys. But it, there's still a, um, a strong minority that um, maybe would uh, be worth exploring and and, and see how how they can um, uh, how, how they can, can be offered um, more alternatives um, to to a um, targeted advertising um, uh, model. So, but interesting, um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, we have five minutes left, so um, I, I think we, we will have to draw it to a close. And um, uh, before I um, uh, ask you, um, before I summar sum sum summarize um, uh, the discussion, I would I would ask you um, maybe to uh, come up with um, one one action point each that um, in in your view should be addressed um, most urgently to make sure um, that that human rights are respected. Um, uh, that's that's the topic of today um, when regulating online platforms um, because that that way our session will contribute to advance the debate on a global level. Um, is it um, be it that uh, you see the GDPR as a role model, um, and, and it should be should be uh, taken to to the global level, or or any um, any particular um, thing that should be explored further? Um, we heard regulatory sandboxes. Anything that you feel um, should be should be done, and uh, by that um, way, we will also meet the IGF rules that require every session to close with a call for action. So. Um, uh i would in, invite you to give your your um last um opinion your your last view on that um one one action point that uh you should uh you, you think should be tackled um yeah uh we um uh, or maybe we can start with uh with you kazuhiko um, Okay, thank you so much. Uh, time is limited, so I will make a brief uh, comment uh, about our panel. Yeah, so uh, I think GDPR is really uh, well established, and uh, yeah, we uh, in Japan the how can I say the data protection, uh, data portability is not uh, protect enough, so we have tremendous. Uh, advertisement and uh, we we need to opt out so yeah uh, europe country european country is uh, yeah is uh, con yeah good enough to protect the data portability and uh, uh, i i'd like to say that data portability is also uh, helpful to Prevent the uh, uh, how can I say so the concentration of the uh, the big tech company, and I mean that the uh, the big tech company like Gafa uh, collecting and gathering the uh, personal data and uh, make a, a, a big data and uh, GDPR uh, somehow uh, protecting the uh, acquiring the uh, the data from the competitor or startup. Uh, so uh, we need to care about the, the collecting data as well. So uh, I think uh, the GDPR well established and we need to care about the, the data collection, the data uh, gathering uh, that will uh, helpful for our uh, privacy and human rights as well. Yeah, thanks so much. 
thank you, Kazuhiko, and um, uh, onwards, Greg. Thank you, and, um, and and thank you for the discussion in the first place. I think very interesting insights. Um, it would be actually useful to continue the to continue the conversation. Um, I I do agree with um, Kazuhiko, and this is like to one of the questions I saw in the um, I saw in the chat. Um, GDPR is quite well established, and we are seeing actually this, um, if you like, Brussels effect. Um, so you know, just to name a few, well, California. Um, a privacy privacy bill, um, Brazil, um, I think um, ch China arguably um, building on the building on the GDPR, um, quite a few other places, um, I believe, um, I believe South Africa, um, Singapore, um, and there's probably there's probably more. Um, and I think that's, um, th th that is, um, that that is food for thought with that um, um, with, with that alignment, general general alignment um, of the of the privacy privacy laws. In terms of the the call to action, I think I would um, I would mention um, ensuring um, ensuring that um, well f governments ensuring that regulators they have um, right um, resources to actually um, to actually properly um, enforce the enforce the law. This is me trying to come back in one way or another. Um, to um, to the to the to the fact to the principle that um, that the DSA, for instance, um, should should really respect um, um, whatever um, privacy and data protection legal framework um, is already is already in place in the in in the EU, um, anyways. Um, and we are seeing that um, data protection authorities, I think, probably um, should um, should have. Um, um, should should have been well th there's been a lot of discussion about the about the enforcement of the law and the capabilities um even you know human resources of the of the authorities right. on the on the ground so just um making sure that um that the regulators um eventual regulators have everything um they need to um properly enforce um legal um legal instruments um the existing law but then future law including the including the dsa Thank you, thank you, Greg. Um, and with that, um, I've been said that the time is over. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank, uh, uh, say thank you um, to to all the panelists, um, to the attentive audience, for for all your valuable comments, your questions. Um, this was a very uh, dynamic uh, and, and forward-looking discussion, um, and I'm very confident uh, can be a fantastic foundation to build on for for anyone who is able and willing. To take things forward here um i'm sure our panelists will do um and with that uh, i thank you thank you all very much thank you <laughs>